Today we're going to chenille a fabric panel and here's how you do it. The panel we're going to use today is called Realistic Field of Sunflowers. It's a 36 inch panel. You can order it at sewingpartsonline.com. What we're going to do with this is we're going to chenille it, of course, which gives it a nice fluffy effect. What's interesting about this panel is it's already kind of a blurred effect already. So when we chenille it, it's going to be even prettier. But this sunflower and the front leaf, they're so vibrant and they're so clear we're going to leave those alone. We're gonna chenille the rest of this entire panel just to see what it looks like. I think it'll be a more dramatic effect, but this is a test, so we don't know until we're done. So to chenille a panel, first you have to start with four identical panels, and that's what we've got here. I've got one, two, three, and four. I've also chosen a backing for this. I've chosen a nice gold color, but what's important to do here is you have to stack all four of these panels up exactly right because you don't want them skewed you don't want them off a little bit so when i cut these i want you to notice these top three panels i cut off the edge there is no extra white space around there i cut it right to the image but on my fourth and bottom panel i kept a half an inch of white space around there and that's going to help us later when we use the chenille cutter it just will will prevent us from cutting through all four all four layers because we don't want to do that and then for my backing i left yet another half an inch my hope is that once we sew all this together and, and, and slice our lines that we might have enough to actually bind this with the backing it may not work out that way but that's okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to draw a draw a line that's at a 45 degree angle through the center of this image. Now the easiest way to do that, I'll show you on here on a dark background. Most of our rulers here have a 45 degree line. This one shows my 45 degree line is right across here. I'm gonna place that line at the top edge of my image. That means when I cut or I draw along this edge, I'm drawing at a 45 degree angle. This is pretty much through the center of the image, so I'm gonna leave it like this. This is a special fabric pen. This will disappear when it, when heat's applied to it. So when we wash and dry this later, this line will go away. But I'm going to draw, this is an actual stitching line through the center of this panel. I'm just gonna carry this down to the end. That will be fine. This is the only line I'm gonna draw on this panel. We're gonna stitch a line all the way across here. Then we're gonna turn and we're gonna stitch a half an inch over back this way, turn it, Back this way, we're gonna go zigzag all the way down to the corner. I'm gonna do the same thing then. I'll start at the center again, and I'll do another half inch here, but I'm gonna stop at this sunflower. I'm gonna pick it up after the sunflower. I'm gonna have my lines go here, 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 just like this. I'm gonna leave this intact. I'm gonna leave this front leaf intact and leave the stem intact. So that's the goal here. Now, before you get started, this is a new project. We're sewing through a lot of fabric. So change the needle in your sewing machine. This is the best time to use a fresh, sharp needle. One other thing is use your walking foot. Take off your regular presser foot because look, going through four, we've got five layers of fabric here. If we used our regular foot that we do use every day, it pushes. So when I push on all this fabric, you can see it can start buckling up. You don't want that. This is a lot of layers to go through. The walking foot more or less goes boom, 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 all the way across. It's really nice. It should keep this more intact, and that's what's important here. Before I sew it, I am going to carefully put a few pins in this because this is a lot of fabric. I want this first line to be really nice. So I'm going to pin this up just a little bit, and then we're going to go and stitch this all the way across. Okay, I've sewn my lines all across here. These are a half inch apart. And make sure you sew these in opposite directions every time. It will cut down on the shifting. You know, I had a little bit of shifting in this. You can tell on one of my corners, just a little, not enough to make any difference, you know, but shift happens, right? I have put a few colored pins just around this sunflower and the leaf because I just want to make sure I don't cut into them. Remember, we're going to keep these nice, but it's time to cut through the lines. I've got my Ulfa chenille cutter and you just put this in the track. Oh, this is why I made the bottom panel larger than the rest. See, I have a white edge here. I kept the larger edge on my bottom panel because I don't want to accidentally cut through it. We're only cutting through three of the image panels, not all four. In order to do that, I can just stick it right here on top of the white because I know that's my fourth panel. 
And I am good to go in there and just push this cutter all the way through. Very easy to do with this cutter. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut all of the rest of these. And I'm also going to take my edge and fold it over a couple times and make a little binding around this whole thing. Okay, quick update. This is what we have so far. I did have enough of, the, of my backing to do a little binding around the edge, but if I did this again, I would give myself more than just one inch. Shifting and all, but it worked out okay. Now, one thing I wanna point out, we have cut, cut between all of these stitched lines, except around the main sunflower and the, and the leaf. Those are prominent on the image panel. So I don't know if you can see, I went a little extra. I stitched around this sunflower. I did a stitching all around it, and I also stitched around this leaf, just because I know this will fray a bit, and it shouldn't be a problem, but I didn't want the fraying to get into those articles. The other thing, I did not use batting on this. If you were gonna use this as a quilt or make a quilt using the chenille process, you would add a layer of batting between the backing and your last image panel. Remember, we're cutting through three of our images. We're leaving the fourth one on the bottom alone. Then you would have a layer of batting and then you would have your backing. This is going to be wall art, so I did not include batting on this. Now, the only thing left is to wash and dry it a few times. I think three times ought to do it. That's what I'm gonna do, and then we'll see what it looks like. And here is the final result. Now, I washed and dried this three times, so you can tell it's, it's fluffing up. The more you wash this, the more that the chenille process will take effect. I like it like this. You can still see the pattern behind it. And remember, we kept the sunflower solid. We did not chenille the sunflower or the leaf. What you have to remember about this is there are four layers of this fabric panel. So yeah, I've got a little bulk here after the washing and drying, but to me, I like that. It just gives the sunflower more of a three-dimensional look. This is it. I hope you will give this a try. If you do chenille a fabric panel, send us a picture of it because we would really love to see it.